Hey, thanks for tuning in. Let's take a tour through the tools. Chapters for your convenience. I just got this 18 by 24 inch mat from Nubra for presentations. It's black on the other side. This is my well-used mat from U.S. Art Supply. It's also black on the reverse. These two I don't use for paints. I use this one to clear fine lines and recesses of sanding dust. This one is wiry but soft. I use it to get under tools and stuff. These are my pigment brushes. Light and bushy that holds pigments well. This one is for rust colors. This one for dark steel and black. And this one for brown pigments. These are my wash and filter brushes. Various sizes. These are Army Painter dry brush brushes. These are my non-fine detail brushes. They're decent brushes. Pro art. Not expensive. Size 20 to 0. These are my go-to brushes. I love them. Flexi File from Germany. They have a uniquely shaped handle. They hold their shape really well and paint beautifully. At the time, this was the most expensive brush I had. AIT Kalinsky Sable. I bought three and have one left to remind me not to buy them again. They frayed really easy for very fine detail brushing. Sable brushes, two in size 10 and two in size 5. Look how beautiful the shape is. Lastly, this is my Tamiya Anti Static Brush. It wasn't cheap, but well worth it. It does work really well. Tweezers. 14 or 15 of these came in a set for 16 bucks on Amazon. I've used them for almost a year now, and I love them. If you see me using a tweezer on camera, it's usually this one. I keep this one in reserve, because it has the finest tip and ability to pluck the tiniest bits. These are positive release tweezers. Very handy. This one is the same shape as the last, but has serrations. The next two are great for PE, and basically anything you need a solid, flat grip for. The tips on these are so sharp. I use these to remove things from very fine crevices. I took a serrated pair, and with tape can grip things without marring them. I use this pair for decals and very fine parts. These were the two I used before I got that set. This is my PE annealing tweezer. The tips can glow a bit and I don't feel it. A couple of surgical tweezers I don't really use. These are hemostats you can lock in place at the handle. These scissors are great for tape. Snippers. This dinosaur is for cutting bulk plastic. This is my non-precise cutter. I think almost everyone has one of these. Cheap and work really well. These are my side cutters. It cuts through plastic like butter, but they will leave the slightest rays. These have a curved blade that I use to cut curved pieces off. This is my set of blades. This is my razor saw. I got five of them, and they're 0 .005 inch, so very fine. I may use this one more than any other, to slice tabs and scrape seams. You can get them in single or double bevel. Having enough specialty blades, I basically just use the back of this blade to scrape. A saw blade for coarse cutting. I use this for slicing coarser bits in tighter spaces. I use this for slicing fine bits in tighter spaces. This is my PE blade. It seems to work really well for that. This is my sharps container. Files, awl, and gouge. This is a scriber for panel lines and such. It's a Creos or Mr. Hobby, heat treated. 0 0.014 inch. You have to be careful, it will really dig in. This is very coarse. 
This is my set of Tamiya files. This one is flat on both sides. I'm not sure there's a difference. This one is flat on one side, rounded on the other. This is a much finer version of the one I showed you. This is an awl. It works great, making tape lines, clearing lines, etc. These are my sanding sticks. Nearly a year old, so they're about to be retired, but they still work okay. They're smooth on the edge. Sanding sponges. I usually cut them in strips and then write the number on back. The print comes off the back quickly with use. I got a pack that comes with a wide range of grit. This is a set of generic sanding sponges with five grits. They work quite well. You get 18 sponges in the pack, but they're less than half the size of the Tamiya ones. These are my tapes. These are Tamiya. 1 millimeter, 6 millimeter, and 18 millimeter. These are the Tamiya flexible tapes. 2, 3, and 5 millimeter. And blue masking tape. This is half inch masking tape that I bought for a specific kit. These are made out of skewers and alligator clips. Three different lengths. These are my tool holders and painting stick holders. They work great. Came two in a pack. These are quite useful. I use these a lot. I got 20 or 25 in a pack. You can use them as sawhorses as well. I rarely use these. They're too strong. You can use these for grip exercises. Drill bits. I bought these last autumn and couldn't be happier. Gyros, you get 20 bits. From 0 0.0135 to 0 0.039. And the lid has a depression for half of the bits. They bite in really well and are rigid. This is my set of micro bits that goes from 0.1 to 1 millimeter. This is my loose assortment of bits under and over 0.1 inch. Being the uh, go big or go home kind of guy, I bought this Dremel a while ago. It's hardwired, has a decent sized chuck, and it goes to 11. Just kidding. It goes from 5 to 35 instead of 1 to 7. Anyway, I rarely go above 10 or 15. It's pretty powerful. These are the glues I sniff. I mean use. These are all I use as plastic glues. I have this for clean plastic. I use this one to join painted surfaces, so I don't contaminate the other one. This is the quick setting extra thin. But I agree with others. I don't think the bond is as good. These are the two Bob Smith Industries CA glues I use. I don't use the super thin so much. It's so runny and I find it difficult to apply precisely. Lots of places rebrand this stuff, even my local hobby shop. This is my everyday CA glue. I like the way it flows. It gives me a few seconds to fiddle before it sets. I got this bag last summer. You don't have to switch them each time. Just put a little tape at the end. I just got these. I have a big photo etch project coming up. These seem to be very well liked. And I picked up a bottle of the Flexi Black. These are slow setting. I resisted getting this for a while, and now I'm so happy I have it. It works great to begin to set the glue. It doesn't mar or stain the surface, and it dries clean. When you spray this, maybe 5% actually hits what you want. It tends to get all over. I got a set of these nail vials, and I can apply it very specifically. This is my favorite canopy glue. I like it because it dries very clear, but also grips well as a glue. And I like its consistency. This is still a nice PVA, but I don't think it binds as well as 560. Wires, coated and uncoated. I got this set of six copper wires, and it goes from 28, 26, 24, 22, 20, and 18 gauge. I have the inch diameter on them for quick view. This is coated wire that works perfectly as 135th communication cable. 
I've also used it as battery cable on 124th cars. These are mini magnets. I got them from my local hobby shop. This is aluminum wire that's .077. It's strong but still slightly flexible. This is thin lead wire. I got this set of multicolored wires that's great for ignition cables. This will last me the rest of my life. A source of very fine wire, 0 .005, is Cat5 cable. This is my micrometer, and I use this at some point in almost every kit I build. I bought this 28 years ago and still works perfectly. Some miscellaneous stuff. I'll make a second video about my paints, thinners, airbrush gear, etc. This is VMS CA glue debonder, and it does work well. It works slowly, which is good. It doesn't affect paints that I've found. I normally use Microsol, but I found it doesn't work well with all decals. See my Tamiya F1 car video. I got this, but haven't tried it yet. I'll show you when I do. I have two sprue goos, gray and black. The gray is ICM, which I find is very good plastic. The black is from Tamiya and also great plastic. This stuff works great. I should use it more. It keeps quite well. It's liquid mask. You brush it over what you want and it forms a film. This is AK Pigment Fixer. It's an enamel-based solution. Pipetters and cups. These 5 mil pipettes weren't that cheap. I used to use them a lot when I made my own thinners. This is a pipetter you can pull up and down and then dump the contents or dispense precisely. These I use every day and 3 mil is a great volume. I measure everything. I can't just eyeball stuff. Jeff Donahue turned me on to these and now I use them all the time. For keeping track of parts, holding solutions, etc. 1 mil cups. I got two 100 cup stacks. For optics, I have this old fly fishing tool and six plus and four plus glasses from Amazon. Usually about two bucks a pair. These are my backdrops. They're food prep mats. I got the blue set of eight for about $15. They're supposed to come in eight shades, but I got two of the fish ones. They'll stain with enamels or lacquers, so I try to be careful. The underside is glossy, but hashed, so you can flip them if you want. This is my wheel stencil. It's nicely rigid, so it holds its shape over a wheel. This is an AK stencil for use on aircraft, etc. It's solvent resistant, flexible, and there's a gradient to the openings. These are my blue tack. They work great. You can use them more than once. This is an Agate Jewelers Burnishing Tool. It was $5. I watch restoration videos and saw one being used on gold foil. And I thought it would be perfect for tape. Let me show you. You can also see me using it in the Pantera video. This is an engineer's ruler. It's great as a cutting fence. Stainless half-inch funnel for pigments, fluids, etc. And my wax pen for picking up small parts. I don't use it as much as I thought I would. Here's my camera stand. It's a Neewer that was the lowest sitting one I could find. It works perfect. The legs will extend. You untwist and there are three inner pegs. There's a ball joint for the camera hold. You can also adjust the central camera post. So there's a big range between the shortest and tallest. This is my narration mic. It was about a hundred bucks, but it works so well. It's a gaming mic that has a wide input volume range here. You can tap to mute. And you can change the phasing back here. These are my streaming cameras. The top one is 4K and the lower one is 2K. 
This is massive overkill, as the streams I join are at like 720. This is my camera. It's a Panasonic camcorder I bought in 2014. It's so old, it uses full-size SD cards. This is the camera I shoot all of my videos with. You can see how close I get in, and it's only 1080p. It's probably the quality of lens and sensor. Anyway, whew, I hope you enjoyed. Ask me if you have any questions about this stuff. Be well, and happy modeling.